morning everybody fantastic to see you all again pebbles the camera's that way no we need to train you better you've got to look that way no you smelt something haven't you okay i'll just crack on without pebbles so there's a few things in photography that have really made a big difference to how i've learned it and that really improves my photos and there's a lot of things that I've done that have just made no difference whatsoever. So I thought I'd share the things that made a really big difference. See you later, Pebbles. And um, why not share seven of them? Because that tends to be what I do. So I've got seven things that make a really big difference to my photography. And they're really simple to do as well. And they're probably not the most obvious things, not the things that you think of straight away. So I've come here. Hopefully we're going to get a good shot tonight as well. Um, the light's looking potentially good, but it is so windy. So we'll see what it's like when I get back to the top of the hill. Go on, Pebbles. Okay, point number one is all about planning. So before you actually get to the location, you've got to plan. And it's something that I didn't used to do very well, but I feel I do it a lot better now. So let me go back a few hours and show you how I planned for this trip. So if all's gone well with the video, I've just been told to come back here and tell you about planning. So I am planning at the moment, the trip to the cloud, which is near me. Um, and there's four things that I, I go about doing when I'm planning a trip. So the first one is research. So I, I research the location. In this case, I know it really well, um, but I actually look back at some of my old photos from there and just, looked at them and I thought, is, is there any particular thing that I could change or shoot differently? So, you know, just, just doing that type of research is good as well. The next one is light. So understand the light and there's lots of different tools for doing that. I use um, obviously weather apps to find out when the sun's going to rise and, and, and fall, etc. But there's two really useful tools, which is TPE 3D, which is um, an app that I have on my phone. Um, it's it's this this up here um, and it allows you as you can probably see it there to um, see the landscape in 3d but then also see what the light's going to do and how the light's going to hit that landscape when it's in 3d now there's a desktop um, app that you can use called google earth pro which does it really well as as well and i'm going to talk about that in a few weeks time i recorded that a while back and i'll i'll, I'll, sh I'll show you that in a few weeks time so then the light's really important. I need to understand how the light's interacting with the land. So then um, maps are important. So I look at the maps. So I look at Google Earth from above. And I look at ordnance survey maps or the local maps in that particular country. Uh, I like to get paper maps as well and, and just sort of study them. And then the final thing is the weather and just check what the weather's going to be like. And I, I don't get put off by bad weather, but I like to know what the weather's going to be because that might change my research and I might sort of iterate that a little bit. So those are the things I always do before any photography trip. Um, I say any photography trip, obviously there's some where you just go and don't do any of that, but they usually fail. Okay, back to me. Okay, so the second point is all about gear and reducing the amount of gear that you have. Now there's a temptation in photography and probably most things that the more gear you have, the better you're gonna get. And we all know that that's just not the case. And if you just look you know, the, at the shots that I've taken now with my iPhone or my Google Pixel, I'll just show some shots now. You can see that these are amazing images and it just proves that it's not what gear you've got, but when you've got that gear, because it's when you've got that gear that's more important. So, you know, if you, if you take like a grad filter and a big filter kit, and then you have a big massive tripod rather than a lightweight one like this, even this one's probably too big, then you're gonna spend a long time setting all that gear up, messing with it, and probably miss the, the actual shot. What you're better doing is, is just taking a camera, just hand holding it, just maybe having one lens, and then really thinking about, you know, just the composition, the location you're in. Pebbles, what on earth have you done? No, that's not, I've not even got a towel. That's not even funny. <laughs> but always take a towel with you. Anyway, on to the third point. And whilst we're on gear, it's not just about functionality in a camera, the, you know, the settings, the megapixels, but it's usability. It's how you know, that tool sort of fits in your hand, how light it is. 
And, and that's what's going to make you use it more and it become a less of a burden to use and allow you to capture the shot better. When you came over, my heart was on its way out. Okay, the third thing is all about shooting in different directions. It's amazing just how different the light can be or the sky can be when you shoot in different directions. So we were in um, Norway and where the sunset, you know, I'd usually shoot with the sunset probably about 30 degrees either way, but we were shooting with the sun behind us because it was lighting up the snow. But then when the sun went down about 90 degrees to where the sun went down, it just glowed this amazing color. And by thinking about that and thinking about those different directions can make a really big change to your photography. Also in woodland photography, I've talked about this before, but if you are shooting with the sun behind you, then um, you're, going to get ref you're going to get shadows on the trees and you want to sort of get rid of those shadows on the trees. So if you shoot into the sun in woodland, I'd, I'd probably advise going in woodland in fog, but if you are to shoot in the sunlight, which you can get good shots, then shooting into the sun can completely change it. You know, shooting just directly or just shooting in different directions can make such a big difference. I can't stress that enough. Okay, we're going to get into the wind soon, but we've got some good light. I wasn't sober and I was thinking out loud. I spoke of your bravery, your wit and audacity. Okay, the third point is coming out whatever the weather because as you can see it's super windy at the moment but that is, is what creates this amazing weather you know we you can see we've got some stunning light over in the distance in the valley there we've got some amazing clouds and hope you can hear me because it's so windy at the moment but this this is what creates stunning images just look at these images that I've, I've taken in weather similar to this and it makes such a big difference now it's sometimes hard to get out in that weather, but how many times have you looked through your window, sat at home, when the weather's not been great, you decided not to get out, and then just as the sun's setting, you get this amazing shot through your window, but there's no composition. So you've got to be out, you've got to get out. If you don't get out, you're never going to get a shot. Okay, the fifth thing, I think we're on five, yeah, the fifth thing is all about trying new things, which is probably the most important. So if you forget any of the others, then trying new things is what ignites your creativity. It's what, you know, when you have a little bit of a lull or you lose a bit of passion, then trying a new thing is going to make a big difference. But it also really helps your photography. So the cloud over there is looking amazing, actually, just over the, over the top there. But rather than just take the scene, what I want to do is just try and maybe get these heathers in out of focus and, and try some sort of shallow depth of field landscape photography. I don't often do that, so I'm going to try it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got the scene over there, but there's not great foreground. So, um, in fact, there's no foreground really. It's quite messy. Um, I could shoot the mid-ground and I've got a shot of that, which is reasonably okay, and, and, and just wait for the light. But what I'm going to try and do is shoot through the heather when Pebbles moves out of the way. But this is this, no, Pebbles, no, out. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is shoot through the heather and just think about where the out of focus heather is going to be at the bottom of the frame and try and blend that in with the rest of the scene. Um, and, and that can give you know a good look. Now this might not be the best of a photo, it doesn't really matter. The key thing is, is that you're trying something new, you're trying something a little bit differently. Because then when you do get some somewhere that might work perfectly for this, then you'll have that tool, you'll have tried something, you'll know what works and what doesn't. And I definitely recommend not taking a dog when you're doing this. Right, so what we're gonna do is just, I've got it on F, Four. Now, ideally, you'd have something like an f2 lens, and I'm focusing on the hill in the background, and I'm just going to shoot through the heather, or you can just shoot through pebbles. <laughs> That's where I'm shooting. 
So, so yeah, so trying something different is really important. So one of the shots that I talked about in a, in a recent video is the shot I got in Iceland where I was really low on the beach. Um, you know, that happened by accident to begin with, but then it was just this amazing shot with this out of focus pebbles that were catching the light. And that produced something really special, a really special shot. But also, apart from just getting that great shot, it made me think differently about future shots and and try and add something to my photography. So not only have I improved my photography, but I've also expanded my sort of horizons of photography as well. So it's definitely worth doing that. Just try things differently. Maybe move your camera and do some ICM like what I was doing in Lofoten and produce something like this, this shot here, but just experiment. It's definitely a good thing to do. In this case, the thing that was a bit different was just pet photography and just trying shooting pebbles in this amazing light. So I thought I couldn't find a good landscape shot. So I just sort of took my time and, you know, just took it in and, and took a shot of pebbles because sometimes you've just got to do different things. Which leads me on to the, 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 the sixth point, which is taking your time. So when you get to a location, I probably failed at that point today because we probably got here a little bit too late. But when you get somewhere, you need to take your time. You need to be able to take the, the location in, understand how the light's falling on the location. I've said it so many times before, but you need to get there many hours before you're going to be doing the shoot, especially if you're going somewhere really special. Because if you just get somewhere and take your camera out, then that's not going to work. But if you get there, have an apple, take your time, then you'll definitely get a better shot. Okay, let's get back to the studio and we can talk about the seventh point. Okay, I'm back looking at the photos now, which brings me on to the seventh point, which is editing, which is super important. Um, because you're taking that raw image and you, you, you're putting your take on it. You're, you're, you're saying, this is how I want to style that image. This is my artistic impression of what I thought I saw on the day. You're trying to you know, convey that emotion um, of, of, of that photo. So these, these are the photos that I've got here um, from, from the day. Uh, I didn't get anything particularly brilliant. It was quite changeable conditions. Obviously I've got some of these where I was shooting through, which would be good to have a look at and, and see what, what they're like. Um, but the thing that I, I did do was shoot pebbles because that was something different. So I've got these two pictures that I liked of pebbles and I've done some basic editing on them. Now, um, you know, if you look at before and after, you can see that there's not a huge difference. I brought out that light here, so that's before and that's after. So you can see that, you know, there's that there's not a massive difference, but I've but I've sort of accentuated what I thought it was like, which is that bright light sort of shining um, towards pebbles. It was a little bit further to the left, so I've sort of moved it with using a radial filter, which I talked about in the middle of the week. Um, and if you missed that, by the way, I've got new midweek videos um, that I'm going to be doing to try and sort of relieve everyone's boredom. Um, and most of those are going to be on editing. So I'll, I'll be doing um, the, the, the call five in five, and I'll be doing them um, sort of, midweek so make sure you press the bell icon below and you'll get some you'll get a notification when i've uploaded one if, if i look at my presets here you can see that this image could look very different depending on which of these presets i applied and and they'd all be valid i think i mean that they're, they're all for different type scenarios that, that I, i've created um but you know they, they all look pretty pretty good really. I mean, I quite like that one and maybe I could apply that one and tweak it. But what I'm trying to say is that editing makes a big difference to your photos and you should um, spend time doing that because I think if you can develop a good editing style, then that can help your photography enormously. So, um, you know, just try doing that. If, you know, if you've got a bit more time now at home, which a lot of us have, unfortunately, um, but we might as well put it to good use. So we might as well um, try and improve our editing skills. I would say there's, there's another thing after editing, which I love, you've seen loads, which is printing. So this is this image here of pebbles, and I just really like printing. And if you haven't tried printing before, I'm gonna do a video on printing as well. Um, it's very, very soon, we're talking all about this big printer, but I'm passionate about it. It makes such a big difference to, to how I think about an image. I, for me, an image isn't finished until it's printed and I can look at it in front of me. So yeah, printing's fantastic. 
Okay, before you go, I just want to tell you about one other thing um, that is my small little bit to try and help um, cheer everybody up during the coronavirus. Not everybody, but people that you know probably need cheering up most, and that's that's maybe the vulnerable or um, those people that are isolated at home. They can't get out because they're elderly or you know part of the vulnerable. And I thought it'd be really good if I just did some online workshops for those people for free. So there's no cost for it. Now, I haven't got unlimited time, but if you look at the link below, there's going to be some some dates next week. Um, I'm going to try and do them every day. So now, if there's not any at, any at the moment, then, then there will be more launch, so don't worry about it too much. And I'm going to have eight on each so that I can have sort of a bit of a one-to-one -one when, when, when we're talking at, um, to, to you as well. But I, I would appreciate it if, if you're not part of that 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 group of people then you don't just take up the spots but maybe if you know somebody that is then you tell them about it and then that they can get something out of it and then you know I can maybe help their photography or if nothing else it's just somebody chatting to them on, on you know um, online I'll do it through YouTube so it'll still be done through YouTube but there'll be a link that I send out um, to those people when they're booked on they'll be able to use that link and they'll be able to see me and interact with me through YouTube as well um, using the inter YouTube chat feature so hopefully that'll work, um, and um, yeah, I think we should all help each other out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a time now to, you know, be together as, as, as one and, and try and fight this nasty virus, um, and I'm sure we can. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching. And, oh, one other thing, my book, there's still time to get a, a book, the book in if you haven't got it, link below. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching, and until next Sunday, bye. <laughs>